welcome to this Bradley Prizes edition of Conceived in Liberty, a Bradley Speaker Series. I'm Rick Graber, president of the Bradley Foundation. Thanks so much for joining us. Americans are divided on many issues these days, but they do overwhelmingly agree on issues regarding China. For instance, according to a Pew Research poll, 90% of people say Beijing does not respect individual rights. Our guest today says that most people outside of China don't begin to understand the full extent of China's human rights abuses. And he's on a mission to change that. Chen Guangcheng is a Chinese-born dissident and vocal critic of the Chinese Communist Party. He's a distinguished fellow at the Catholic University of America and author of The Barefoot Lawyer, A Blind Man's Fight for Justice and Freedom in China. Guangcheng is also a 2022 Bradley Prize winner. Congratulations and welcome, Guangcheng. It is wonderful to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. This is a uh, uh, this is a great honor for me. I'm so happy to hear to talk with uh, uh, with you and all the audience. Well, thank you very much. Well, let's let's jump right in, Guan Cheng. Uh, you grew up in poverty in a remote village in China, and an illness as an infant left you permanently blind. But through sheer determination, you learned to read and write at age 18, and then taught yourself law. I mean, it truly is a remarkable story. Tell us a little bit about your journey into civil rights from there. How did you learn about China's human rights abuses and how did you try to fight back against them? Thank you. Uh, First, I want to let you know, you know, because I can see, so I, uh, yeah, I can see, so no uh, opportunity for education uh, for the blind people in my hometown. So I, I use the time to learn the rule, the nature uh, rule uh, from the nature world. And my father read the stories for me about heroes, about uh, doing the right thing, uh, when the injustice happening, you should give a response like that. So I understand the human rights abuses because they just happening all there. But uh, since uh, 1991, China passed a law for the protection of disabled people. Uh, One of the uh, provisions in the law was the disabled people couldn't own uh, taxes, have to perform unpaid labor uh, for state. But in reality, the government continue to uh, use violence to force the disabled people to pay the taxes and uh, perform manual labor. Of course, uh, these uh, become a burden on the families of disabled. So I use the law to suit the government. And uh, at the same time, uh, I use the lawsuit and the oversight of media. So the government uh, was forced to act according to the law. All the cases were very successful. So more and more disabled people and villagers come to my house to ask me to help them when they uh, had uh, trouble with the the authoritarian. In fact, I don't want just to help them. I want them to learn how to use the law, how to protect by themselves. So I give them a lot of speeches. Even I invite my 
a lawyer friend from Beijing to Shandong to give them a classes, to tell them how to use the law, to tell them how to fight back if the Communist Party uh, destroyed their rights. Even we don't have the law books. You can't buy the law books in the normal store. So I, when I come to Beijing, I bought some and bring them back to learn, you know, no real book. And my father, my brother, they read the law book to me. I remember it. So from the beginning, all the pieces work. But later, uh, because a lot of disabled people learn the law and use it to fight back the Communist Party, and the Communist Party asked the judiciary system reviewed the cases. When I came back, they come to my office, out my home and ask me to help them. So I write the document and bring the cases to judiciary. And of course, the Khan party very angry and asked the, uh, the thugs to kidnap me from Beijing and put me under house arrest and uh, prosecuting start and and they fight back to me. All the pieces uh, made me realize that the underlying issue was the authoritarian uh, systems. Remarkable story. Remarkable story. Guan Cheng, you said that, that you think that the United States needs to take a harder line with the Chinese Communist Party and, and in your words, give up on the appeasement policy. Talk about that a little bit more. Tell us what you think America should be doing. Uh, you know, for many years, the U.S. has had an official relationship with the Communist Party. Yes. I think that is wrong. You know, the Chinese Communist Party does not represent the Chinese people. It is a kidnapper. So I think the U.S. is a leader of the whole world. It should stand with the Chinese people and support them to create, uh, to create a constitutional based on human rights, the rule of law, freedom, like that, and to right to its rights, its responsibility uh, to lead the whole world in, in uh, eliminating the authoritarian dictatorships. I think that is the uh, democratic nation's goal. And the, you know, the second, if the Communist Party decided to persecute activists anywhere, in mainland China or in the uh, democratic nations, the U.S. should stand up to against them back. And you know, it win the Olympics, right? The U.S. government said, oh, we use the diplomat uh, section to Beijing, but later they sent 80 diplomats to Beijing to join them. Okay, that is not good. And for Russia, you know, the, uh, the U.S. said, okay, we sanction to Putin, but later they let him to take 80 billion dollars back why? Right? So yes. this is the appeasement. You know, this is a very, a very dangerous, I think. Guan Cheng, there, there's a debate in our country about what American exceptionalism is and whether the country is still exceptional. What would you say to people who disagree with the notion of American exceptionalism? Okay, I want to remind them uh, when my family and I were in the greatest danger, I chose to go to Beijing 
to the American Embassy for Safety. This in itself shows that America is truly a beacon, truly a beacon. It is a shining example for other countries. And second, I believe the U.S. need to uh, the U.S. need to raise the uh, raise their responsibility to lead the whole world to make the world better. And I know uh, a lot of people. You know, in the whole world. Uh, however, the U.S. domestic politics go for those who are in lived in other places. The U.S. remains the land of the free and the home of the brave. I know that for many people, the U.S. is a backing, is a beacon of hope in, for humanity. So, I think the U.S. is first important for the whole world. Those who born in a democracy are very lucky. Don't take it for granted. Very well said. Uh, Guan Cheng, we'll be celebrating your Bradley Prize in a couple of weeks in Washington, DC. We're all looking forward to that. As our last question today, what does the Bradley Prize mean to you and what message do you hope that it sends? First of all, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm very honored to get the prize from Bradley Foundation. I know Brad Foundation did a very important job to protect the universal values. And for me, that means that my work pushing for human rights, uh, uh, freedom, uh, individual rights, the rule of law, freedom is validated. At the same time, the price uh, encourage others to stand up and to fight to protect the basic civil rights. The price, uh, the price, uh, rec uh, rec recognize the whole world that the universal values, freedom democracy, human rights, and the rule of law are the foundation of a society that protects our uh, social justice. I think only with true social justice will there be peace. So finally, I want to remind the people, you know, the all those freedom are uh, fragile. Great. So, yeah, fragile. So we should stand up to protect them and stop the Khan party to try to destroy them. So if we lost the U.S. and the U.S. become for to enemy uh, occupation, where we should go. Very well said. Chen Guan Cheng, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you for your courage. You truly are an, an inspiration for all of us, and, and we appreciate that very much. Thank you again. Yeah, I'm very uh, honored to talk with you, and I will give a strong speech in May 17th. We look forward to it. And as always, thanks to all of you for joining us on this episode of Conceived in Liberty.